And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Everybody who's traded has gone through periods of time where their strategy hasn't worked. Where if not a hard stop, you should reevaluate the trades you're in uh, based on time. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. All right. Good morning, everyone. I apologize for my uh, internet connection during the market prep. It seems to be back to solid again. We're going to try and get through Make Hogue Money the old-fashioned way. If you are in on YouTube, I did put in the link in the chat to join the Zoom meeting if you would like to. This is one of the things that we're still trying to work out as far as uh, Top Step TV is how we're going to handle make hog money and get people in there and have the ability to talk and show charts and all of that stuff. These are all things that we're working on. <clears throat> we may only be doing make hog money on YouTube from this point forward, or at some point moving forward, we're going to try and uh, and uh, uh, get this all worked out for everybody, but. For today, welcome to Make Hogue Money. This is me, Senior Performance Coach, here at Top Step. Um, this is the CFTC disclaimer. Uh, what we're doing here is for educational purposes only. We're not suggesting the purchase or sale of any product here. As a matter of fact, I am certainly not. You guys are coming up with ideas to try and make me money. But it also tells us that there's considerable risk in futures trading. Because these are leveraged products, you you, you, you have the risk of losing more than your initial, initial investment. We should only be using risk capital. To me, risk capital is money I can afford to lose. And succeeding in the trading combine at Top Step gives you the opportunity to use somebody else's risk capital. Don't put yourself at that kind of risk. Again, we are not, we're not suggesting the purchase or sale of any particular product or security. And of course, past performance is never indicative of future results. These are the rules for make hog money. We've got always expecting kindness and respect. There's a million different of opinions in markets, and that's what makes them so good. We're going to have a couple of people enabled to talk today if they would like to. We're all going to be involved in the decision-making process. Context is, of course, helpful. We're going to use the chat rooms to discuss trades. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the MES for opportunities. We're not going to trade, just trade. Not taking losing trades, which we all know is a joke. We know there are going to be losses in trading. It's just part of the game. We have to cut them, keep them small, and move along. Feedback of, on Mako Money is, of course, vital. And, of course, you know I'm sure you have some feedback for us today. Uh, you can always send feedback to jhoagland at topstep.com. J-H-O-A-G-L-A-N-D at topstep.com. Uh, Will wants to see the white shirt. Here it is. Hello. There we go. Is this real or Memorex? It's good to see everybody. Thanks for, uh, for coming and and dealing with our technical problems again today, and we do apologize. But here's the platform. Let's bring that up. Uh, we looks like we're going to be opening possibly with a very small gap. Uh, if anybody has trade ideas, you can let me know. And if anybody wants to chat, just raise your hand or tell me in the webinar chat here on the Zoom meeting. Of course, we won't be able to have you join the the broadcast here if you're on YouTube, but I will be watching the chat to see if there's any trade ideas that we want to start thinking about. Uh, you know, it, the way the market is and with the situation. Yesterday, we did have an opening range trade that did open uh, relatively well and, and paid us. Not thinking it's uh, going to be a good opportunity for us today, but something we may want to think about as long as it's cheap. What do we think? Yes, I killed the gremlins. Now, for some reason in my area, the, the internet has been going out periodically for five or ten minutes a couple of times a day. I'm going to have a very stern phone call 
with somebody at Comcast. I don't know if that's actually going to help anything, but we're going to try. And because I, I don't want this to happen, this is a pain. This is a pain. So we're getting pretty close to the open. We've got just over three minutes. Do we want to take the opening range trade or not? I'm going to send a poll. Take the trade, yes, no, on the on the Zoom side. And I will send a poll here on YouTube. Uh, take the opening range trade or not. OR trade. Yes or no. The more people that vote, the more clear the vote is going to be. We've got 60% voting on the Zoom side. We've got some overnight inventory that's short to the downside. This little area of consolidation here, I think, has done a pretty good job of uh, kind of reconciling a lot of the overnight inventory. We know it's all short, short time frame. Sarah, we've been thinking about trying a hot spot uh, in, in, in to to kind of get away from internet issues like that. Something we're thinking about doing. Thank you for the suggestion again, Sarah. Yeah, Will is not a fan of calling Comcast, nor am I. I'll probably be sitting here listening to hold music forever. And that, you know what, Shaw, if we had AT&T fiber in my area, I would certainly look to do it. Yep. And I think I'm going to uh, actually go and get a new, uh, a new modem today. Uh, we've been renting the one from Comcast for a while, and I'm sure we can do better than that. Uh, if you'll forgive me for a moment... I, I need to open up a window here. I'll be back. Talk amongst yourselves. Vote. And we'll see what's going on for the opening range trade. All right, I'm back. Anybody wants to chat, let me know. Sixteen downside gaps this year, and only one was a gap and go. Very interesting statistic there, Rob. Thank you very much. Shaw says no. All right, we got 77% participation in Zoom. We're getting pretty close to the time here. Uh, 62% yes, and on the YouTube side, 66% yes. That's 21 votes, about 50% of the current you, current people watching. You got Starlink as a backup, and now it's your main. Yeah, Rich, we'll have to think about this then, yeah. A couple of people have suggested Starlink. So it looks like we're getting a yes for the opening range trade. Let's see how. Let's see if we can keep it small. We're not getting the information here on this chart. Let me f bomb this thing so we can get the right information. No. Opening range. Save. Thirty-three. Well, we're just gonna have to do this. Thirty-three quarter. So it's a three-point opening range. I say we. I say we. We go for it. So we're looking at a short here and a long. Thirty-six half. That's our risk. Our overnight low is in play right here. And we're in. So the vote is in, yes. 
here's our risk. I'm going to move this a couple of ticks away from the eye of the opening range. Here's the And we'll see what happens. Hope everybody's day is going better than mine. I haven't traded in my personal account here just yet. Uh, but uh, just dealing with the gremlins here. I think I may have uh, caught a few before. And I'm hoping we have Gizmo here to help us. Anderson, we're glad you're here too. Thanks for the suggestions, folks, on uh, getting this issue taken care of. For, for you know, it's been, it has it's been a while since we really had any kind of issue with this, but that's the way it goes. Uh, Zach, bartending till midnight. Yeah, the sleep schedule is a big thing, especially when you're when you're trading. Uh, the entry was 30, 41, 32, 50. So now it finally puts up the opening range for us. So we missed uh, the low of the opening range by a little bit here, but the risk is pretty small on this. So, you know, and it was, was pointed out, where was that? Nine, 16 downside gaps this year, and only one has been a gap and go. We'll see if today's the, the second one. Let's take a look at the five-minute chart here. Nobody wants to chat? I could get Mr. Hoyt here. Mr. Hoyt, you want to chat? Trading is a lonely business. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hoyt. NASDAQ still stuck in the opening range. I think if we come back inside the opening, the uh, overnight high here, we should probably call this a loss. We're going to trim the risk on this. As Mr. Uh, Mr. Ben has told us he thinks that the shorts are getting stuffed. We're back inside the opening range. Try long. Good morning, guys. Morning, Mr. Hoyt. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Looking sharp in the, in the button down. Oh, there. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, we started something new today, and, of course, my Internet screwed things up. But <laughs> and, now, and now I'm here over-trading. Well, Ben, I remember last Tuesday, um, Ben had, uh, Ben said, hey, the shorts, what was it, like a four to one sellers versus buyers? And then lo and behold, we went down all day long. That was that was the Tuesday before the uh, FOMC. Mm -hmm. Any any intel on that now, Ben? What's, what's going on? I don't know if Ben's even here. Yeah, he's here. He, uh, he's, he's probably out doing something and doesn't doesn't want to chat. Folks, hey, thanks, Daniel. Let's see, what do we got here? So we got Jamie on YouTube saying, just stay short all day. Ron Zero, if you're having problems with your platforms, let support know about it, please. It's all Randolph's fault. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he is. He butt dialed me yesterday. I called him. He was at the dentist. So 
Hopefully things went well at the dentist. So what are you thinking, Matt? I mean, I've got some resting orders a little higher. Over it, like I'm, I'm going to scale in 4152, 4155, 41. So you're looking for shorts. 57. Yeah, I mean, I got, you know, I wasn't paying up. I was too busy last week to, to really pay attention, but it was a beautiful short on Tuesday. I mean, it was easy to see, and I didn't see it. Mm. <laughs> One of those, just, just doing too many other things. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. So right now... So we're still holding the gap. Just hanging here at the overnight low. Right, yeah. maybe we challenge the close of yesterday, which is right at 52 area. Then I've got my stops at 63.75, you know, so kind of rich. But I'll do a 10-point risk if it's over the high. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like that's, my, that's my little move here. So So there's settlement. That's considerable upside move. Yeah, like if we take out that high fine, I'm, I'm wrong and I'm happy to be wrong. I don't want to be too cheap on the risk because if I'm right, I feel like we're going to go down to you know, 4108 to 4115. I don't feel, you know, I don't oh. see why we wouldn't. Other than maybe it's just going to be a slow day. I'm well, kind of asking a lot, but a slow day. You know, yesterday was nothing. It was like torture. Right. Basically, so. Right. You know, that's the day I don't play. Because I don't want to be tortured and lose all my money in a 12-point range. Um, so it's smarter for me to walk away. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this as kind of, you know, probably relatively range-bound as long as we... Don't have anything meaningful happen below this low right here. 41.27 quarter, I think, is what it is on the E-mini S&P. Mm -hmm. So, really, I'm over-trading already here this morning. Well, I mean, you tried the opening range trade. Yeah, that didn't work. That didn't work. Well, now we're just doing it. Okay. I tried to turn up my, my microphone here. I'm just on a laptop, so. Um, we've got a... Uh, I do like the short. I can, I can show you my screen if you want to see my... Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a suggestion to show your screen, so let's do that. All right, let's see here. Let's go. Screen, share screen, there we go. Uh, you got it? Yep, we got you. All uh, right, here we go. So I'll tell you what, let me just erase everything so you guys can see my thought process here. So I try to mark the important highs. Mm -hmm. they're important to me because price made a lower low from the high right so that's gotcha why it's an important high made. trends yeah exactly so then from there it's too when we get a change in behavior right we take out some swings it's like where's price going so then i'm going to do my pitch work you know me go from the highest high and I connect to the lowest low extreme. And I pull that up to this high. And I'm making a standard pitchfork. And then the reason I really like this pitchfork is you can see the center line here. Uh -huh. A lot of touches, right? Touch, yeah. touch, touch. Then we fail away from this line, go to the extreme. When we, when we get through the, I mean, even if you just draw the trend line, you would measure how far away we got from the trend line, flip it over the top. I mean, you know, price has a chance of stalling out up here. Which yes. It did, yes. Right. That's where we were on Tuesday. So if we would have gone to like a, you know, then I was like, okay. 
This was when I didn't take that trade. I could say, okay. Now, what time frame is this chart? This one, I think is a 20 minute. I could do a 30 minute just because everybody has easy access to a 30 minute, right? Boom, 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 another high, low, high. Let's make it a different color. Let's make it white so it's easy to see. You can see this, right, this was right there in the morning. Mm -hmm. right we opened at 8.30 and it was like, bam. So it was kind of like this pitchfork, you know, price went right to the median line, which is what it's supposed to do 80% of the time. So that was a beautiful setup. So now, get rid of that. Okay, so this pitchfork's kind of still in play, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens. Get this out of the way. So maybe now... Do another pitch work here. A, B, C. C. Now that doesn't tell me anything yet, but what I can do is a modified shift pitch work. What that does is it connects your A point here to your C point and stretches that out, right? So if I make this a modified shift just by clicking on it, there we go. I mean, you know, price is kind of flirting with this. It hasn't decisively done anything, really. Right. Um, so what I can do is... Since price violated it kind of like by that much, I make like a sliding parallel, something parallel to that pitchfork, and say, okay, you know, price is kind of respecting this. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe it comes up here. You can see my order's already farther away. So maybe I move my sell order down here and have my stop either above here or above here. So that's what kind of risk are we looking at there? Well, yeah, let's see if that even makes sense. So that's the idea, but it doesn't mean uh, it's a good idea yet. So let's look. Risk reward. Let's see if I want to get short here. My profit's going to be... Let's just say it's there. Let's Two and a half to one. Three. So if I go, if I get above here, what's this? Uh, Forty-one fifty-seven. Mm -hmm. It's above yesterday's close. It's above this little swing high here at one o'clock. Oh, probably wrong. Yes, that's where it failed from. So that's my resistance. So I'm cool having a stop there. So if I move this down to here, my stop's going to be at. 58 half. Let's see what that looks like. So 4.21 risk reward right there. And the risk is 50 bucks a contract because I'm trading the micros. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we going to have a 50 point move today? I don't know. 10 points of risk. Right. 10 For points of risk. I'm okay with 40 so, points of profit. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move my, I'm going to move my troops into play over here. And a couple of them will go above the line just because maybe the market tries to get up to the where it closed yesterday before it fails. If got to give it that size. Got a question for you from Zach. Do you subscribe to TradingView? I do. I did. Uh, I forget which package I did. I didn't do the top tier. I think I did the middle tier. I, I forget. Um, and I did it on Thanksgiving, so I got a nice price on it. <clears throat> they had a Thanksgiving sale. Yeah, right. The Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is Matt's personal account. You can still link to TradingView to the trade trade of eight. Uh, so yes, there's a way to do it. Yep. Now on the TST trader, I couldn't do pitchforks the way I wanted to. I forget why. Um, but what you can do is use trend lines because a pitchfork is basically you find your three points: your A. Look at that A. Good B. A. Good A. <laughs> C. <laughs> Once you find those. All you're trying to do is connect the dots here. Yeah. Out of here. So if you only have trend lines, 
on your system, not a big deal. Cause there's always a way to get like the a line segment and find the center of it. So the pitchfork takes B point to C point. And then from a, you bisect it down the middle. So here's a, and there you go. That would be your standard looking pitchfork, right? And then you could just clone the lines and say, okay, one there, one in the middle, one down there. Cause there's a way to, to do it in the settings where it'll show you the center of your line segments. Mm. You could you the center of the B to C. Um, it's a bit laborious, but it'll help you, you know, learn how to do it. Yeah. I guess there's, um, on TS trader, there's, uh, you know, community indicators that people, and I, and apparently there's a pitchfork indicator on there. I haven't, I haven't had the time to really go looking for it and trying to set it up that much. So right. something I've something something else on my list. I got you. So a lot of times I'm not looking at a time based bar chart just because there's a lot of drift overnight and it skews everything. Because I'm usually using a couple of days of information. Yeah, overnight inventory. I switch to like a you know a ten tick range bar chart or a twenty in the S and P. And if I'm doing a Nasdaq, I'm using a fifty tick range chart. Sometimes a twenty five. Um, if the 25 is way too fast, I go to the 50. Yeah, everything about the NASDAQ to me is too fast. Yeah. <laughs> we used to call it the NASDAQ when I traded on the floor. Oh. <laughs> Back then, I was able to... Uh, I was able to... Uh, trade it a little, a little bit better. I mean, that was the easier. That was the, the tech bubble. Yeah. So there's I'd, much more feel. There's much more feel on the floor. You can hear the roar, and you could by the by sound of people's voices and the sound of the pit, you could kind of tell. I mean, it was helpful. It was a good indicator. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a friend up in the uh, in the Nasdaq pit filling orders, so I just text him orders. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. There's just nothing here. So I doodle around and kind of wait. Hey, John Wilkoyak is watching on YouTube. You remember John Wilkoyak, Matt? What was your badge, John? I don't remember. He was JMW. JMW, I remember that badge. Yep. A good trader. Better than I was. Yeah, had I known more about myself back then, right? It would have been, uh, would have been nice. It's okay. I still did well. I mean, and if, I'll I'll take the memories all day long. It was so much fun down there, right? <laughs> Good to see you, Johnny. What else is going on? So I ran into uh, Earl Counter. Remember Earl? Oh. I don't remember Earl. He was in the S and P's, big tall guy. I ran into oh. him, ran into him up in Chuck's in Lake Geneva. Was his badge just said Earl on it? I yes. Think yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember Earl. He had presence. Yes, he did. <laughs> was a big guy. Yes, he. Yeah, he, uh, he still is. <laughs> Let me see here. He's actually, well, I mean, he's trading it. He's also in the trading combine. I didn't, oh, cool. I didn't know that until I ran into him, but, yeah, he's in the trading combine. There's a few guys. Uh, Kenny, Kenny Glick is in the trading combine. All right. Huh. Ben says Matt Screen reminds him of the original series Star Trek episode <laughs> the the, Thol the Tholian web. I know it's it's a little complicated, right? This isn't even so bad here. Here we'll get rid of that. Then we'll just make this. Very small world, Jason.
on a tablet, UU space. I don't know. I don't, I've never used the trade of eight on a tablet, but to put on a moving average is, is, is just kind of point and click, right? Uh, I'm going to take the screen here for just a second, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. So we're just kind of hanging around here. We're still long. We'll see what happens. But you uh, use space, um, you know, on a, on a computer, and I'm relatively sure it's the same. I guess it depends on what kind of tablet you're using, but you just go up here, um, go to here, hit indicators and moving averages, and then you choose whatever, you know, you want an exponential moving average, let's, let's call it a 20, which may already be on here. I'm gonna thicken it up so it's obvious. And there it is, there's the 20. So it should be relatively easy and simple on uh, on a uh, a tablet. Mm hmm. Why we're just hanging around. Yeah, Ben is pointing out, yes, it is a low confidence open. We have been back and forth between both sides of the opening range several times. It's just kind of rotating here, which, I mean, that's kind of hypothesis number one for me today is I don't think we're going to see any big moves uh, unless, of course, you know, we do have uh, as John Bokoyak has pointed out, we do have a talking Fed at 11.05 today. There are, there are, you know, at 10 o'clock, there's some short-time bill announcements. And then, you know, 11.05 again, John Williams speaks. But that's it. I mean, it's all everybody is, I think, doing today is is expecting or trying to position themselves either hedged or out of the market for tomorrow's CPI number. Which, what are they expecting tomorrow? Um, point four uh, on month over month, year over year, five point five when it was five point six, core point three when it was point four. What's it all mean? How's the market going to react? Who the heck knows? Do you know, Matt? Do I know what? What's going to happen tomorrow? Yes, it's going to be exciting. There's going to be some volatility. Um, you know, I feel like uh, after price shows its hand, I'm definitely going to be leaning one way, right? Like, I mean, if we take out, you know, these 64 on the high side, it's a long way up. Could really, could really go higher significantly. But if that doesn't happen and it's a <laughs> bad number for going down, I feel like below, you know, 060. Ben, I'm bringing you in. PayPal positive earnings, 10% drop. Love it, right? What is the market going to do? We never know. Ben's got something he wants to show. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Mr. Ben. How are you? Oh, I've seen better days, but I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah, this is yesterday and today have been uh, quiet, huh? Yeah, I um, I wanted to share an observation of the tech mm. and what it may mean going forward here in this trade. Let's see. Where's okay. your picture? 
Oh, you don't see it yet? No, you don't see anything. Yeah, you do. You took your picture off. No, it's there. There's a picture there. Oh, we didn't see it. So let me go to market internals here. So we're, we're negative two to one, okay? But the tick is what I want to show. This little dotted line is the open. It starts at you know the 9 a.m. when the tick starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see there's just been just hammering, hammering, hammering. And that's super significant because it didn't get really past negative 400. Um, but it's been, that's been the, the theme, right? So this is, for those who don't know, the tick is um, all the stocks that are up ticking or down ticking at any given moment. So the majority are down ticking. And if we go back to um, price movement, we haven't had any downside. Now, if I pull this one in, this is a 10 minute, you can see on the on the bid, notice how like there was 1,800 here, 1,300 there, mm -hmm. 1,300 there. Mm -hmm. There's only 14, 11, and 12. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, slamming into that. Somebody's buying underneath and it's steadily sort of kind of melted up since then. And it looks like there we go now. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, the last thing I wanted to say about these observations is that you got to watch if we don't, because I, I had to get out of my trade. I was long, but once it came back out of yesterday's Range. low, I, I started all of a sudden that emotional time thing started kicking in, you know, mm -hmm. or else I got to get out. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that, but it looks like it's taken off now. So that's all. I was just going to say it may be worth staying long. That's my whole point. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ben. I'm going to take the screen back just for a okay. few minutes got here. It. And so one of the things that we kind of look at here is Delta, right? So when, we, when Ben started to uh, hit, um, started opening when he opened his screen i checked the delta and we were you know just barely hanging in a, in a profit and delta was negative negative. and that kind of shows what ben was showing there as well when we have delta negative and price can't go in that direction it indicates potential longer time frame buyers here right now delta is a positive 800 but that could be just the short time frame shorts who's sold against those longer time frame longs bailing out. So now what we're going to monitor for Ben, and if you'll help with this and in the things that you're looking at there is if there is a longer time frame presence that is buying the S and P's to adjust inventory for tomorrow, do they move their bids up? So if we get about half back in the day here, Greg, if you're here, that half back number. Uh, and we start to see Delta kind of fall off again, maybe around half back, then it might be indicative of the longer time frame traders moving their bids up. So right now it still looks like we're holding overnight inventory to the short side. There was some, rec some re um, reconciliation of that in this area of balance. We looked lower, we rejected, negative delta, short time frame too short. We're seeing the short time frame shorts nervous now. They're getting, they're, they're like, oh, I don't like this anymore. We're going to get out. And they tend to get out en masse. Let me see here if there's support. Hmm. There may be another trade of aid issue today. I am not sure. Not seeing complaints coming in, but. I would suggest exiting anywhere from here to about 45 or the value area low from yesterday or the overnight value area high. That's just me. Because you're already in, in it for almost 10 points, right? Right. So what are we looking at? Well, I just, um, you know, I see an inflection point at the volume value area high, or there's a volume ledge at 45, um, or the value area low from yesterday, volume value area low at 46 quarter. Just, just anywhere between here and there. It's a good target. Yeah, I think you could say, okay, that was well done. We'll look for something else. So we'll put in an exit at 45. 
which puts us at that high volume node and the low of value from yesterday. But you you know sometimes uh, when I when I put in an offer for an or an exit, the market sees it and runs away from it, or so it seems. Matt, that ever happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Only on the entries and the profit targets, though. No, no other time. Yeah, it looks like Trade of Eight's having an issue. Okay, they can see the picture in Zoom. <laughs> I can't remember the name, that guy's name. He's from Tra Trailer Park Boys, which I don't watch, but I've seen clips of it. What's that? The picture I used... For Zoom, oh, it's uh, I forget the guy's name, but he's he's got the bottle glasses and Trailer Park Boys, some TV show. It seems as though this platform is working well. Can't log in. Can't. Are these on Sim or or live accounts? Vince, December live. Delta's back to about even now. Live is on, Sim is off. Sim, okay. Well, uh, here's where we find out if it's rotational or. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the area we were talking about maybe finding if bids were moved up. Yeah. I'm going to try one here, path back if I can get down there. We're back to negative delta. I'll risk the volume point control area. This is a 30 minute candlestick chart here, Jeff. Missed that one. Yeah, it was a pretty good bounce there, huh? Yeah. So the fact that it stopped at half back and didn't go through the open again um, does indicate some short term, you know, in my book, some short term players are getting involved and um, maybe not institutional, but, you know, they held it there versus going through. <clears throat> I'm letting, uh, letting them know that we're having some issues here. I haven't seen your brother in a while. Seems like. Yeah. I don't know. He's, I, I, he called yesterday, butt dialed me. He was at the dentist. <laughs> All right, I let him know. It's very aggravating. My apologies.
back to negative delta. Here we are at half back. We'll see who wins. Yeah. Well, it's really hammering to the downside, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it just above the overnight low if it'll mm -hmm. get down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took us right back to entry. List. Wow, it's a beautiful day. Be a good day to do something else here in Chicago. I've been trying my hand at mushroom hunting lately. Oh, really? Did I, did I mention that to you before? No. Yeah. You I've some books in the library. I've done some, you know, I've been out to some areas where I've heard they were in some, some uh, county parks around here. And, well, there's a reason they're $80 a pound. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> You're looking for more. Yeah, well, it's, it's, I don't know, it's a little chilly each time I went out, even though we had some warm days and... um I'm a little, uh, my sister made me kind of aware. She knows somebody has Lyme disease and oh yeah, ticks. And it's kind of, kind of freaked me out a little bit. And, uh, make sure you know what mushroom you're taking. Oh yeah. I'm looking for the morels. Yeah. There you go. Those are the good ones. But there's something else called chicken of the woods. I've, I've had that. There's a little bar around here that, you know, people bring in stuff like that, pass it around. That's good. Unless I'm mistaken, maybe they call morels chicken in the woods. Anyway, I got I got filled there at 34 quarter. I think you're at 34 half, right? Yep. Okay. Well, now I'm back in the game. Delta's negative 900. Now here's where you saw your buyers earlier. Let's see if they're still there. See, we should have never put that target in there. It did seem to turn things around. Uh -huh. Oh, Brett. We live on a couple hundred acres with plenty of mushrooms around the creek. Also pulling ticks off every day. My goodness. <laughs> Jeez. Brett, careful with that. My uh, kids bought us tickets to go see uh, the Dead and Company in June at the at uh, Wrigley Field. My my daughter lives a, a block from Wrigley Field. Yeah, fun. You, you know, whenever you start talking about mushrooms, I think about the dead. <laughs> uh, different kind of mushrooms. I went there in 2017 or 18. They put on a great show. Supposedly, this is the last tour. Of course, you know we heard that from the from the Who in 1982. Right. Yeah. That's what Dalton said about 20 times too. Yeah. It's the final, 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 final tour. They played Barton <laughs> Hall, uh, which is a famous show from May 7th, 77. But they did an anniversary type of thing last night there. I wonder what tickets cost for that. 
Yeah, Rob, Jim Dalton. Zach, I'm not sure what the issue is there. Mm. Jeff, you're 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 up. Do it. Just what is it? Rotate low to high to low. Sweetheart. Come on, baby. GT, you can't close. Um, hit F5. See if that reboots your platform to let you out. I'm seeing that the issue is somewhat resolving. In pretty deep in, in Delta here so far. Negative 1,200 now. You're still seeing aggressive sellers. Are they going to win or are they going to lose? I think I'm going to come out here up near the overnight VPOC. Well, probably 36 half when you get there. I didn't like how fast that moved down was. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty stiff, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna keep popping out of the overnight range too. But we have a uh, buying tail. <clears throat> hey, did you get a chance to check out that live markets video? John? Which, uh, refresh my memory? Um, I, I sent you a, a live markets video from like um, part one of six. Oh, the Dalton stuff? Yeah. I think I've kind of seen most of that before. Okay. Yeah, I did. And, and I do appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Well, it gets, you know, the first um, probably couple sessions or stuff ba you basic. sure already know but sure. like it, it does it is good refresher deeper stuff later on yeah jt they'll, they'll they will certainly work with anybody who was affected by any outages that that happened here we got to beat up our partners with uh with these platforms it sounds like Boy, these sellers are really working on it. So what do we do here? Well, I don't know. We did get a real buildup between 33 half and 34 on the bid. Mm -hmm. not, not a super imbalance, but it definitely is more weighted to the aggressive sellers getting filled on mm -hmm. the well I think you know I'm, you know I gotta move on here shortly so I think we'll just let this play out as it is we take out the low we get out we take out the high we get out we'll see what happens you know it's a lot of free aggressive market order sellers down here and they're not getting they're not getting what they're looking for at least not yet so we'll see how this plays out. 
I should. <clears throat> I should have time. Yeah, I do have time to do a reflection. So we'll review what happened today and make hope money on the reflection if you'd like to join. Again, um, our apologies on the issues with Tradevate the last couple of days. It's a partner, and we are working to have them improve everything. And uh, it just takes time, and I apologize. Again, <clears throat> you know, we will work with anybody who is affected by it. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, you would think that electronic trading would be much closer to perfect, but nothing could be further from the truth. So trade well, everybody, today. And again, I apologize. Uh, we're going to try again the, uh, the uh, market prep again tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I won't lose internet, and hopefully you do enjoy it. And uh, what do we have otherwise today? Oh, we have the uh, Goach's Playbook today at 115. There are different types of charts that traders use. We're going to talk about why we should use market stops, stop market, instead of stop limits. If you're not sure what the difference is, definitely watch the coach's playbook. We've seen a lot of people that don't realize they're trading with stop limits get run over and establish some pretty big losses because of that. All right? Thank you. Trade well, Thank everyone. You, Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Matt. Thank you all for coming and joining us today.